Hey everyone, it's Adam with yet another What's New in Mix Effect. Today we're going to talk about some new features, changes, and a new product with Mix Effect 1.2.4. Let's get started right now. So, first thing we're going to talk about is the vertical fader bar. So, what is this? Uh, this is basically a vertical version of the horizontal fader bar. Uh, if you use an iPad, you see that you have a vertical fader bar when you're in the landscape mode. But this is actually useful if you have uh, an iPhone or an iPod Touch. You can actually just simplify the switcher interface so that you just have the cut and auto button and the fader bar. And if you have haptic feedback turned on on your iPhone, you can actually feel it when you move the fader bar like this. So I'm going to bring up the display so you can actually see what's happening on the uh, mix effect. So I'm going to just tap the fader bar. I can feel it moving and it does the transition just like that. So this is a good way, again, if you want to simplify your interface and you just want to use like an iPhone as a, kind of almost like a hardware fader bar because you feel the haptic touch, you can do that like this. Pretty cool. All right, what's next? So the next thing is some improvements to shortcuts. So I don't know how many people are using shortcuts, but shortcuts is a very powerful way to control your ATEM using conditional logic. So you can actually query the state of the ATEM, like is the downstream keyer on? And if it is on, turn it off. If it's off, turn it on in just one shortcut. So you don't have to have a macro that's like turn on and turn off. You can just run the shortcut. And there were some problems with running shortcuts sometimes on, on the iPad. It would sometimes bring an error saying it could not connect to the app. And I finally figured out the problem. So shortcuts should be much more reliable when you're launching them. Let's look at SuperSource. So a few little changes here. Uh, when you're recording a macro, you'll see a new option at the bottom of the box controls called set all settings and set box settings. And so what those two buttons do is if you tap the set box settings, it will record just the box settings for the currently selected box. And if you choose set all settings, it will record all the settings for all the boxes in the current super source. And current super source meaning that if you have ATEM constellation, it will you have two super sources, so it'll only do the super source that you're currently on. Uh, and this is useful if you just want to record a macro and record all the positions of all the four boxes, you just tap set all settings. Now, a change to the user interface is that when you are recording macros, you'll see the set all settings button. But if you're not recording macros, I actually hide the set all settings buttons now in all the sheets. So this appears in like the upstream keyers, the downstream keyers, and transitions. And they didn't really, it doesn't really do anything when you tap it if you're not recording macros. So I hide it. All right, let's just jump into the meat of things. OSC. There's been a few bug fixes and changes with OSC. Um, there's a new version of the Mix Effect native companion module written by Johnny Estias. So Johnny and I have been hard at work in getting this up to speed, and the new version 1.1.0 supports all the features and actions in Mix Effect 1.2.3 and 1.2.4. You can go download the beta from mixeffect.app/companion. Now, this hasn't been rolled into the BitFocus companion beta builds yet, so you'll have to download a version for Windows, uh, Intel Macs, and Apple Silicon Macs from Johnny's website. Um, go ahead and do that because there are some really great things in this uh, release of his module, including presets and variables. So you see here on the in the screenshot, we have variables that you can use to determine what the current uh, mix effect bus, the current downstream keyer, upstream keyer, super source, media player, auxiliary, input, or even the multi-view. And you can use those to create very powerful um, buttons, which I will show you in the companion profiles that I've created for the A10 Mini Extreme and Extreme ISO. He also has some presets. So if you like some of the super sources that come with Mix Effect, you can just drag and drop them um, into the grid and you can have one button access to super source presets. And he's going to be adding more presets in the future in uh, newer versions of the companion module. So where are we on the roadmap? We've done phase one and we've done phase two. So version 1.1.0 of the companion module um, basically brings it with feature parity with mix effect 1.2.4. 
Now, we are currently working on phase three, the feedback, and we've actually made some very good progress. So the next version uh, mix effect and the native companion module will offer feedback. And you'll see that in the next thing that I'm going to talk about, which is a new 32 button companion profile that I've made for A10 Mini and A10 Mini Extreme users. This is a separate product. Um, I'll give you a little quick demo of it and I'm selling it for $20. Uh, you can go get more information at mixeffect.app slash companion dash profiles. But basically what this is, is it uses Johnny's native companion module and mix effect to create 72 pages of buttons that control nearly every aspect of the ATEM extreme. And you can actually see it right here. And I'm gonna, gonna demo this um, in real time. Color generators. So we have some preset color generators. You can choose white, silver, gray. You can add your own, you can change them however you want. But what's really powerful is when you tap the adjust HSL button. And what that does is, and I'll demonstrate that right now by going to my iPad. So let's bring up the upstream keyer with myself in it. Let's see, let's go to upstream keyer too. And I'm gonna bring myself in. There I am right there. I'm gonna move me to the upper right. So if we take a look at the, um, I'm gonna push the color generators here and I'm gonna to go to HSL and you can see the grid of numbers and I'm just gonna change the hue. Um, and let's actually go to color generators in the iPad. I'm gonna change the hue and I'm just gonna make it go up and you can see it moving like this make it go down by one, go down by 10. And because the um, luminance is so high, you can't really see what the color is. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna boost the saturation up like this. So you can actually use the Stream Deck um, and Companion to make fine tune controls over your color presets. And then if I wanted to switch to color two, I just have color two and I can do plus, plus, plus for this guy. Um, change the hue like this. You actually can't see what I was doing with the luminance. Um, like this. If I want to luminance 100, I can just hit that. Luminance zero, I can hit that really quickly. So that's pretty neat. <clears throat> so let's go back to our keynote over here and I will hide my upstream here. And actually I'm gonna do it right here. So I'm on upstream here too, that's on air. I'm gonna to toggle off air. And there's that little one that just disappeared. Um, coming back, we have downstream keyers. And you can just see what kinds of things you can do. You can set the frame rate, you can change the sources, you can toggle you know, the pre-multiply key, you can change the clip plus and minus and the gain, uh, all fine granular controls. The multi-view, you can just change the multi-view right from here. If you have multiple multi-views, like if you're running an ATEM constellation that has four multi-views, you can just tap multi-view two, three, or four, and then change them right from the stream deck. Uh, we have a concept, again, of variables. So you can store the variable of like what the DSK is, and then you can just tap DSK2, and that will select DSK2, and then when you tap any of the DSK buttons, it will only affect DSK2. So this is a quick way to change what kind of object you wanna modify. And if we look back here, in the bottom left-hand corner, there's a select button. And so whenever you tap that select button, you'll go straight to this select the current object screen. And you can hit the back button to go back to the previous page or you can hit the home button, which is the mix effect icon in the upper left to go back to the home screen. Fairlight audio. There's pages for all the eight input sources, including the two microphones and the master input, which is you see on the left. You can also toggle video follows audio from the main Fairlight page. And then you can see on the right side image, I'm modifying mic one. You can set the frame delays, or you can just adjust the input minus one, minus two, five or go to infinity uh, or go up plus one plus five or max for both the input and the gain and if you don't like the you know the the increments that i use you can just change them however you want macros we have complete support for all the macros so from zero macro one all the way to number 100 uh, and you can also toggle the loop stop and continue macros that are running Media stills, you can select between the media players, one and two, and then you can choose which still index um, you want active. And again, with feedback coming in the next version, we'll be able to show you which one is actually highlighted. Transitions, uh, this one is the white 
pattern on the left hand side. So you see the icons that correspond to the white pattern. You just tap it and it'll just change the white pattern. On the right hand side is the DVE. So you can change you know, how you want to do the DVE transition, whether it's the graphic logo wipe or one of the push or squeezes with the A10 mini lineup. Output's pretty simple. You can start and stop the stream or record, or you can use a preset for one of your streaming profiles like Facebook, Twitch, Twitter, Vimeo, YouTube, or Restream IO. With the upstream keyers, uh, you have complete control over the Luma Chroma Pattern DVE uh, upstream keyers. Uh, here are some pages with the flying key on the right, and then the other one is what kind of options you have with the DVE. Um, it's really cool with the upstream keyer with the kind of the flying key, you can do really funky things. So let me show you how that works. So if we bring back our friend right there, and I'm just going to go to the DVE, I'm going to say DVE position, and I have a nice little grid control that I can just like click this button to move it wherever I want. Okay, so let's say I want this box here, and I'm going to say set A, which sets the A point uh, of this flying key. I'm going to just move this up to the center, and I'll move this guy, let's just move him right there. And I'm going to say set B. And now with the flying key, if we go to the flying key screen here, which you can see on the right, I can just push these buttons run to A and run to B. And then I can run to infinity by just pushing one of these buttons like this. If I run back to A and say I wanted to go all the way to the upper left, I can just push that like that. So it's really cool how you can just control all aspects of the ATEM right from the Stream Deck. And the Stream Deck, because it has all these buttons, you can make the interface exactly how you want it to, to look. So Super Source is another cool thing. So with the Super Source, I am able to highlight boxes. So for instance, box one is me in the upper right, and box two is the... Um, the Mac Mini that you see on Keynote presentation. So I'm going to just reset the highlight right there. I can also turn off boxes. So if I wanted to turn myself off, I would just tap this button right here, and I'm gone, although you still hear my voice, and I can bring myself back. And once again, with feedback, we'll be able to show which boxes are actually enabled and which ones are highlighted in the future. So stay tuned. If we want to swap boxes, I can just push the Swap Boxes button. So I can actually do swaps one and two, like this, and back like that to swap. So here are some examples of the Supersource box positions and box size. So if I want to just move my position for this guy, I can just like do like this, like that. Uh, if I want to move box two, I can just move them like this. So it's a really great way just to have control over here. If you don't want to use your finger, you can actually use the Stream Deck interface right there. Uh, so that's basically a quick overview of the companion profile that I've created. Again, it's $20. You can download it uh, and purchase it at mixeffect.app slash companion dash profiles. And upgrades to this particular profile will be free. Um, so when we do add feedback, I'll update the profile and then you'll have feedback for all your things. Now there are 73 pages to this. So you'll want to export your current companion configuration profile before you import the new ones and make sure you save your other pages and move rearrange them in case um, uh, I have the pages on the pages that you already have. So I'm using pages 21 to 93 and then page one actually just has a button that jumps you to page 21. So make sure that if you use this, you know, you don't have anything in pages 21 to 93 and if you do kind of rearrange them so you can fit that. Within, or take out the pages that you don't like. Um, again, feedback's coming, so I'll be able to do things like color the program and color the preview red and green and set things like the on-air says to like yellow. Um, and I will be working on future uh, profiles for things like the A10 Mini, A10 Mini Pro, Pro ISO, the Television Studio uh, 4K, and the A10 Constellation. And then Possibly in the future, when we update the OSC commands to support the older A10 modules, we'll be able to create companion profiles for those. So that's what's new in MixEffect 1.2.4. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that you take the time to take a look at the companion profiles and the work that Johnny and I have done with the native companion module. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.